Not sure if you've seen the news, but Manchester United are going to have Ralph Ragnick in as our interim manager. David Ornstein has confirmed it from The Athletic. We haven't got an announcement from the club yet, but no doubt that will happen in the next few days. How excited are you? If you watch my live stream, my live reaction, I think you know how excited I am. So I don't need to talk to you about that. What I want to do in this video is speak to you. Sleeves getting rolled up for this one. Speak to you about what starting 11 could Ralph Ragnick use at Manchester United. I've already done an in-depth video looking at his coaching style, his coaching philosophy, the principles on which he coaches his system. And I did that a couple of weeks ago. It was my attempt to be a bit more proactive as a fan. And ultimately, it's proven correct. And I'm so excited by the appointment. But what is his team going to look like? Let's get straight into this one. Please consider subscribing to United People's TV if you're new. Lovely to have you on board. If you do join, let's get into it. Now, here, Ralph Ragnick is known as the godfather of Gegenpressen, somebody who Jurgen Klopp learned from, somebody who Thomas Tuchel learned from, one of the most astute and experienced managers inside the German game, and he plays with that style. Quotes here from Ralph Ragnick from the Coach's Voice interviews that I took a look at in my video. Big up to the Coach's Voice for doing them. It's a high-pressing and counter-pressing footballing style. I would say fast, proactive, attacking, counter-attacking, counter-pressing, and exciting. All words that will be music to the ears of Manchester United fans. But what will the formation look like? We've obviously got a hell of a squad, right? But how would somebody like Ragnick, who will adopt that gag and pressing system, how would he... How would he set Manchester United up? We take a look here, and this is on Total Football Analysis on YouTube. Again, big up, big shout out to you guys. Um, this is the formation he used at Hoffenheim mainly, that 4-3-3. And if we take a look over at what he did at Leipzig, he did use a 3-5-2. But if you're looking at the main formations that Ragnick has used overall in his career, you're looking at a more traditional 4-4-2 or a 4-1, a 4-4-2 diamond. But basically what you can look at here is a bit of a split, I would say, between those two. And that's what we're going to take a look at here on United People's TV. Let's go. Let's get into it. Let's look at this 11. As you can see, the full 11 is there. I've set it up against a, just a, a standard 4-3-3 because I want to talk about each zone. I want to talk about each area. I want to get into this one. As I said, a proper tactical video on Ralph Randick and how he could set Manchester United up. As you can see, I've gone for the 4 2 Two, two. That means two holding midfielders. And there you're looking. I've got Fred down there. I've got Van der Beek down there. Then you've got two attacking midfielders. You've got Bruno Fernandes. And you've got Sancho I've got there in those lines. And then you've got two strikers. You've got Marcus Rashford and Cristiano Ronaldo. Now, he does like to operate inside the, the Gegenpressen. Outside of possession, that's where we're going to see probably... The most significant difference to this Manchester United team. If we're looking at that team there, if that was the starting 11, you probably have question marks about Ronaldo. That's obviously going to be the biggest question about this team. How can Ralph Ragnick operate a proper pressing system when he's got Ronaldo in there? Because we know Ronaldo doesn't press. That's fair enough. But Ronaldo, let's see what he can do. That's a question I don't have an answer to. But in terms of the starting 11, that's what I went for. I went for De Gea in goal, Shaw, Maguire, Varane, Wan-Bissaka is the back five with Fred and Van der Beek as a dynamic midfield duo. I'll get into that in a bit. With Sancho and Bruno operating, you can put them down as essential attacking midfielders. You can put them down as in inverted wingers. If you, however you are, you want to, you know, label it. Sancho and Bruno there with Rashford and Ronaldo up front. But of course, you could throw, you could put Cavani in there. I mean, if you're looking at a man who's going to suit a pressing system, you're not going to look any further than Edinson Cavani, are you? But I don't really think that United are going to operate every single game with a front two who are 36 and 34 years old. It strikes me that Rashford will very much suit this system and very much thrive under Ralph Ragnick. If I'm going to choose, probably, if I'm going to choose three players that I think will really shine and thrive under Ralph Ragnick, these are the three that I would choose. First and foremost, I would absolutely go for this man here. Fred is going to be Ralph Ragnick's dream player. Somebody who is really intense in his press, high up the pitch, because again, that's what Ragnick does. If you're looking at what Ragnick tries to operate, he tries to operate overloads on the ball carrier. So, for example, if we've got, I don't know, this team in white randomly. If you've got the fullback there and you've got him on the ball, what he wants to do is create numerical advantages to get Rashford, get Sancho squeezing the space out. And what he ideally wants, it depends whether or not he's going to operate Manchester United in a high press or in a more of a mid-press. It depends what part of the pitch he wants United to do that in. We've got the quality in the squad and quality in the presses there, really, 
to do it high up the pitch. So I kind of be surprised if we did anything else apart from do that high up the pitch. But you never know. You never know, right? This is all hypothetical. Uh, so as I said, overloads. He likes to get. He'll try and get Rashford and Sancho. Try and get so it's two on one there. And what will happen is the team shifts across. Now what this does is squeeze the whole space out. It means that you cut passing options. So it'll be Fred coming up here. It'll be Van der Beek coming up there. It will be people coming across to squeeze the space. Now, of course, that's going to leave huge gaps here. But the, the the idea behind this is the intensity of the press and the collectiveness of the press doesn't matter because you because you press those spaces out. The team doesn't have the opportunity to use those spaces on the other side of the pitch. That's the main crux of what he likes to achieve with his teams and what he has achieved with his teams. And as I said, you've got to be really excited at the fact that he's literally known as the godfather of Gegenpressen, the godfather of the pressing game. Jurgen Klopp learned from him. Thomas Tuchel learned from him. And as I said in my reaction, uh, that I see a proper continuation plan here unfolding in front of our eyes at Manchester United. I have to keep rubbing my eyes because United are making smart decisions. This doesn't happen at Manchester United. It's just not supposed to happen. But what we can see here is a system that he's going to introduce and implement into Manchester United. And he's got between now and the end of May to get it perfect for whoever comes in next, whether that's Ten Hag or Poch. And both of them, there's foundations in this system that really suit their style of play. Both of them play aggressive pressing systems, ideally. And certainly Ten Hag plays a high one. And somebody who definitely will thrive in this system is Donny van der Beek. He's waited it out. He's been acting professional the entire time. Big props to Donny van der Beek for his attitude the whole way through, man. I seriously got to give him huge props for that. Van der Beek is somebody who plays in, he thrived inside that system at Ajax. Van der Beek is a very press resistant midfielder. The reason I say that, I mean that if he's got, if he's got the ball here, he's got possession. This is why I was so confused by uh, Solskjaer's sort of like lack of desire to use him in this position. If he's got two players on there, on him, press resistant means he doesn't panic. He'll know the right pass to do, whether that'll be a little dink through there to Fred, whether that'll be a pass back to Maguire. Van der Beek is used to having pressure on him and he's not going to panic in that situation. And also, he's very, very good. Well, we know how good Van der Beek is, right? We've seen it. We saw it against Watford. But Donny van der Beek and Fred strikes me as the best midfield duo that will work under Ralph Rannick because it will be about work rate. So in that sense, Scott, Scott McTominay will have a position to play. But I think Scott McTominay is going to, get a, going, to, going to go down in the pecking order. Now, there's one player who I've not even got on my bench here. One player who I'm not really going to have a conversation about, and that's Paul Pogba. Paul Pogba is injured until, what, halfway through December anyway. And there's a chance he leaves in January. And if I'm looking at players who are thriving or could thrive under Ralph Ragnick, the polar opposite of Paul Pogba. Paul Pogba would not suit this formation, not suit this style, and not suit that system at all. So I think if Paul Pogba was cons was, might have been leaving, I think Ragnick coming in has only sealed the deal. So I think Fred and I think Van der Beek will thrive in that system. And I think this man over there will as well. Jaden Sancho. Uh, we, we saw the real Sancho uh, against uh, Villarreal with that goal, with that overall performance. But again, this pressing system, it's far more what Sancho got used to at Dortmund. Uh, and that will suit his game massively. Because when you play inside this pressing system, there's a lot of movement. And the idea is that by doing these overloads, by doing that, I don't know, and forcing an error, forcing a mistake, say the ball's going to go through there and it gets intercepted by Fred who snips and snaps in front of his player. Boom. You're going to get Sancho being able to make those runs in behind there when a team is out of shape and disorganized. And that is when Jaden Sancho will be at his best. And I can't wait to see what he does inside this system. Now, as I said, probably the biggest question that anybody's going to have is around this man. And I'll be honest, I don't know the answer to that. I really, really don't. Ronaldo, I think we have seen it. You know, in these last couple of months, it's been pretty poor to watch, isn't it? It's been bad. It's been really bad. It really has been bad. Uh, but Ronaldo's really shown a willingness to run. But I don't want Ronaldo to empty his tank chasing a ball down in the corner. I don't care if it helps the team overall. I want to see Ronaldo saving himself for those moments inside the 18-yard box and scoring those goals. I don't know how you negate that. Because uh, if you haven't seen the quote and the video of it already, uh, Ralph Ragnick described pressing as being pregnant. He goes, you can't be a little bit of pregnant in the same concept as you can't do a little bit of pressing. And that is where it's a bit of a confusion because if Ronaldo doesn't press, then it creates a hole inside this press. 
And it means that maybe Manchester United won't operate a high press. Maybe Manchester United will move that a little bit further down the pitch, which means we will press slightly deeper inside our own half. Same sort of system, same sort of uh, principles, but it then negates the need for Ronaldo to press. So it just means that we might, instead of pressing really high up the pitch, we might just press, as I said, more in the middle of the pitch there. Because then if you do that, who have you got? Van der Beek, Fred, Bruno, Sancho, Rashford, no doubt, can get involved as well. Shaw coming aggressively up. It might be that we do a mid-press rather than a high press. Same concept, it just it changes what part of the pitch we do it at. But that starting 11 there, what's your reaction to that? If we look at this bench, Greenwood can come in there for Marcus Rashford, drop him in and out. They could do similar things, similar roles. I think Greenwood will have a great time under Ralph Radnick as well. Uh, Martial, question marks. I've got... Uh, I think we'll all have question marks there about whether Martial can thrive in this system or not. It's not that he's a lazy player. But he is quite lazy uh, sometimes. Uh, and by comparison to Cavani, it's just Martial plays differently. He does play differently. As I said, McTominay, I could see McTominay being okay. McTominay in the side of this system, he's behind Fred and Van der Beek, in my own opinion, in this system. I would probably say he comes in there for Fred when Fred can't play, if Fred is injured, X, Y, Z. But I don't think McTominay... McTominay is more of a box-to-box -box midfielder. We know that. And maybe in this system that will work for him. You could see him winning the ball. Maybe Van der Beek drops in behind. But again, if you're looking at the weakness of this formation, we know what it is. It's that there is no dominant, dominant, dominant midfielder. But maybe in a 4-2-2-2, it negates a need for that. There isn't going to be one holding midfielder. Of course, we might not play 4-2-2-2. We might play a 4-2 diamond in which you would play, I don't know whether that's Donny Van der Beek, oh, sorry, McTominay or Fred. And maybe you would operate something like that, a little bit more narrow. I don't think that would suit the players that we've got. And it would, as I said, make us a little bit too narrow. But I would hesitate to say that this sort of variation on a 4-4-2 would suit Manchester United and suit Ragnick's style a little bit better. Matic, not someone who's going to really thrive in the system at all. We all know that Matic is on the way out anyway. And this is just only going to double confirm that. Ahmad, I'm excited to see what happens. I can't rule, I can't say he'll thrive in it. I can't say he won't because I haven't seen enough of Ahmad. By Lindelof and Tellez, I think Lindelof would, could do quite well in it because he's a, he's a, he's a as I said, a ball-playing centre-back. And in these sorts of systems, you need players like him who can break the lines. But it's just that what we're going to see at Manchester United now really is the introduction of a proper pressing system. We're going to press collectively as units. We're going to shift... From if, if we're over here and we're pressing, we are going to shift collectively. Let me, let me bring you up. We're going to move from one side of the pitch to the other as a team like that. Up and down. If we're pressing the ball over this side, the whole team's going to move across. If we're pressing the ball over this time, the whole team's going to move across. And that's what we didn't do against Liverpool, for example. That was when you saw United really doing, as Ralph Ragnick says, a little bit of pressing. And it didn't work. And we got exposed horrendously. But for me, looking at a Ralph Ragnick starting 11 and a formation and a style, I've explained a few key details of it. I could have, I could have gone in more, more in depth, sorry, but maybe I'll do that in a separate video. But what do you think about that as a starting 11 for Manchester United? That back five there with McTom not no, sorry, McTomino, you snuck in there. Jeez, come on in. As I said, Fred, Fred Van der Beek and Sancho for me are the three players I would predict immediately to thrive in this system. Not that others wouldn't thrive in Bruno Fernandes. If we're looking at organised pressing, he must be rubbing his hands together because he has been the king of the chaotic press. That's why I call Bruno Fernandes. Uh, but if he's now pressing inside a system under a manager who thrives on pressing, Bruno Fernandes, again, should be a player that really thrives in this system because everyone else will be doing it with him. And maybe, as I said, Ronaldo is a question mark inside the system, but Bruno will suit it. Sancho will suit it. Fred will suit it. Van der Beek will suit it. Greenwood will suit it. Rashford will suit it. But if we're looking at my starting 11, that's what I would go for. Rashford and Ronaldo up front with a mid, well, with Sancho and Bruno operating as attacking midfielders or inverted wingers just behind them. I'm not what you want to, want to call them. Van der Beek and Fred. Now, what you can see there is it does create a big space there. That's going to have to be covered by intense movement. And that's going to be down to Manchester United off the ball, in and out of possession, a lot of movement inside this system for Ragnik. It's going to be exciting, ladies and gents, what comes next. Because for years and years and years, we've been calling for, I don't know, a modernization of our club. Ralph Ragnick is that man who can come in, implement a system and a style and do it 
and he's done it with real experience and he's done it at multiple clubs. I'm excited. What do you think about that starting 11? What do you think about the Ragnik appointment? You let me know in the comments below. Hopefully you've enjoyed the videos I've done on Ragnik previously. I will do more of them. Let me know in the comments below any other things you'd like me to cover. I'm going to do something probably more in depth on his coaching staff. Maybe who did he have at Leipzig? Are they available now? I'm going to be taking a look at plenty more, but take it easy. Drop a like on the video and subscribe if you have enjoyed it and you've learned a bit, but that's the team I would go for. Who would you have in your team? You let me know in the comments below. Take it easy.